One of the biggest talking points of Sokum Fire Team Bravo was the exciting new world offered by Crosstalk. Crosstalk is a system where literally you take your PSP, you hook it up to your PS2 with a serial cable that you normally use to hook your PSP up to a PC. And basically, as you progress through both games, we're, we're taking track of little flags as you do things. You, know, you might find a weapons cache, you might take a picture of a boat in Fire Team Bravo, and those have repercussions um, on each game. So uh, basically, as you play through, and uh, some of them are, are uh, discrete objectives, and some of them are very obvious. If you do this, you'll be notified that now in SOCOM 3, you know, um, a certain enemy type has less powerful weapons, that sort of thing. And actually, there's around 69 or so of those crosstalk links throughout both games. Well, both games take place in similar areas of operation. It's basically two different tactical teams working in parallel. And so they'd be going up against similar enemies, taking on maybe somewhat related objectives. If a SEAL in SOCOM 3, for example, went above and beyond the Call of Duty and, say, destroyed some extra enemies, like maybe a tank, well, when they connect the two systems and download that data, those enemies or that vehicle may not be in the other, in the other game because your, you know, your helper team basically already took care of them. So we made sure that a lot of the fire team Bravo missions would enhance the SOCOM 3 missions or explain them a little bit better, that there would be a lot of tie-ins. And so what we did is we really sat down, um, uh, Kobe, who's our writer, uh, was the writer on both projects, and so obviously he knew exactly what was happening in SOCOM 3, and so he was able to give us a, a big framework, and we were able to identify parts of the story that would link in Fire Team Bravo really well. Um, the characters as well, we, we chose um, specific characters from SOCOM 3 that we wanted to bring into Fire Team Bravo, and a lot of the ways it was, it was kind of cool because we were able to take secondary characters from SOCOM 3 that we thought were cool and give them much more attention in our game, which I think is pretty, uh, pretty fun. While the PS2 and PSP versions of Sokum share many strengths, each game still retains its own distinct flavor. Sokum 3 and Fireteam Bravo are very, very similar in a lot of ways, but they definitely have their, uh, their own unique qualities and let them stand on their own. You know, Sokum 3 has vehicles, that was one of the new additions, um, has four teammates. Um, the PSP had to get a little more, you know, down and personal uh, on that platform. Um, so we really tried to focus on, you know, a single teammate. Well, working with the PSP is challenging, um, especially when you're dealing with a game that has done so well on the PS2. But then you take it to the PSP, which obviously has some bigger limitations. It has one analog stick where the PS2 had two. Uh, there's fewer buttons. Uh, obviously, uh, there's slightly less graphical power to it. But we realized that rather than just try and um, boil down SOCOM 2 onto the PSP, that we really needed to embrace uh, what the PSP could do well. So we did things like we added a target lock system that would allow uh, the players to use a single analog stick. Other things that we did, we added in an instant action mode because we knew that as a portable device, the PSP players would want something that they could sort of jump in and play a 10 or 15 minute mission. Uh, what we did is we tried to design conservatively and we tried to uh, make every level as dense as possible uh, and then focus a lot on getting the, the online up to speed with what SOCOM 3 is. A lot of the big features that we had on the SOCOM 3 translated over to the Fireteam Bravo pretty well, especially the community features going online to the message boards, having player mail, uh, a lot of the clan functionality. Some of it's identical in the, in the two titles in that they have this core SOCOM community that both titles share. In the end, what we had is a product which is a lot more like a console game, but only on the PSP, which is the size of an envelope.